Texas, scenic San Diego, and Jack Murphy Stadium, home to the SeaWorld Holiday Bowl, and the great offensive potential. BYU's aerial attack is a potent weapon that's always ready to explode. The thrust of the Cougars' offense is a passing game engineered by sophomore quarterback Ty Detmer, who leads the nation in passing efficiency. Wide receiver Jeff Franzen is part of an arsenal that includes running back Matt Bellini, who's dangerous out of the backfield, and a lethal tight end in Chris Smith. Outland Trophy winner Muhammad el gave Detmer and his receivers time to break 11 NCAA records as Lavelle Edwards' team finished 10-2 and, and won the WAC. Bob Davis leads a linebacking core that's rock solid with hard-hitting Rocky Beagle as one counterpart and Chad Robinson as another. The Cougars are psyched for their festive eighth trip to the Holiday Bowl. Penn State stands in the way and the Lions enter their first Holiday Bowl with a message. We're going to play Eastern football, Penn State football, and uh, you better button up because we're coming out. And there's not going to be any finesse. We're coming right at you. And uh, you know, let's get it on. Penn State comes to San Diego prepared and equipped to stop BYU with a stingy defense led by Butkus Award finalist Andre Collins who had 130 tackles this season. The defense ranked fourth in the nation allowing under 12 points a game with Mark D'Onofrio leading the sack charge and causing fits for quarterbacks like Major Harris. Joe Paterno has relied on a healthy supply of running backs over the years and this season is no exception. Blair Thomas who successfully recovered from knee surgery fulfilled his college dreams this year with over 1,300 yards rushing, and he finished strong with six straight 100-yard games. Tony Saka took over at quarterback when Tom Bill was suspended and helped lead the Lions to another Lambert Trophy. To beat BYU, Saka's offense will probably have to produce plenty of points. If he sputters, get ready to see Tom Bill. It's the best of the East against the best of the West next. Welcome back to Jack Murphy Stadium. The conditions could not be better. In fact, a week ago, if you were looking at a map of the United States, there was really only one place to be, and that was San Diego. 55 in the evening, 75 during the day, 58 degrees with a slim chance of rain. We got a little rain here in San Diego. In fact, a good bit of rain for this part of the country yesterday, but we're dry for this one. And Joe Paterno, the head football coach of the Nittany Lions in his 24th season, going after his 220th victory. And remember this, this is his 20th bowl game. And Lavelle Edwards, who in 18 seasons has taken teams to bowl games, 13 of those years, going after win number 166 and his fifth holiday bowl victory, should he come up with it tonight. Penn State will be kicking off. The Cougars won the toss, elected to receive, and Ray Tarassi will be kicking off and dropping back deep for BYU. Stacy Corley along with Eric Mortensen, and their kickoff team has been an outstanding one, ranked eighth in the country. So they normally get good field position when they get the football after receiving the opening kickoff. It should be noted, though, that Penn State has been known to come up with a few tricks in its kicking game. We saw that happen in the West Virginia game earlier in the year. A pooch kick to force some fumbles. Well, they may try to keep the ball away from Stacy Corley because he returned two big ones against the Air Force Academy. The opening kickoff, 99 yards, and then later on, another touchdown. So, they may pooch it up. And you see the strange alignment that Penn State starts their kicking game from. They begin in a huddle and then break. And they make the defense concern themselves about the possibility of both that pooch and or the onside kick. Nothing strange, just your basic football with the opening kickoff coming deep to Mortensen. He starts a yard deep in the end zone. Down at the 16-yard line, and that's where the Cougars take over first and 10. Ty Detmer will be at quarterback. Backing him up, Matt Bellini and Fred Winningham, the running backs. The wide receivers, they'll use six of them. Nine, Nyberg and boys are the starters. The tight end is Chris Smith. And up front, Robert Stevens is the center. Flanked by the guards, Brian May and Mount Muhammad. Muhammad el will wear 79 rather than 64 tonight. Mike Kime and Neil Fort are the tackles. Some problems with his usual jersey, so Muhammad el will be wearing number 79 for Lavelle Edwards here in this Holiday Bowl game. First and 10. And 
And it's the out pattern complete. That's Franzen. Jeff Franzen out to the 43-yard line. Andre Collins made the stop a 26-yard gain. Franzen uh, in the last four games has been an excellent receiver, and normally Penn State doesn't miss tackles like that. Henderson missed that tackle. Franzen, who runs better than you than you think he can run, is finally hauled down by 31 Andre Collins, who that's probably the first of maybe 30 tackles we're going to see by Collins because he can run so well. Bellini now in that slot, the H-back or slot back in this BYU offense. Quick drop. And the pass complete to Nyberg, and Brent Nyberg has yet another Cougar first down. The Nittany Lion defense already being tested. Jim Dieter is healthy again. He's the nose tackle. Frank Giannetti and Rick Schoenwolf for the tackles. The inside linebackers, Chismar and Collins. And the outside linebackers, both freshmen with speed, McKenzie and Gibbons. The corners are good ones, Henderson and Thomas. And the safeties have experience as well, Sherrod Range and Gary Brown. Two plays, two first downs for BYU. We're just underway. Detmer looking for Nyberg. He's got it. Touchdown, BYU. A marker down back at the 44-yard line, so hold on. Well, they're obviously bringing it back, aren't they? Detmer three for three, but the biggest one won't count. Wendell Shelton's our referee. And Ellis for the receiver. Downfield. Offense. Repeat. First down. And off the play fake, that can sometimes happen. Well, particularly in this pattern, because that's what is known as a naked. And that normally is a quick pass to the tight end coming back across. But that ball held up and held up. And Ditma kept waiting and waiting. And by waiting like he did then it's a normal tendency for a lineman to get downfield on that particular pattern. First down and 15. Number 17, Andy Boyce now in the game at the top of your screen. And uh, he'll pick this one up near the 40-yard line of Penn State, roughly five yards shy of the first down. Reginald Gibbons, the right side linebacker, made the stop, the freshman from Sussex, Virginia. Well, you got a freshman in Gibbons working against a experience uh, boys and I think you're going to see a lot of that uh, tonight. You'll notice that outside of that long pass which wasn't really designed to be long but everything has been short and quick. In other words trying to get rid of the ball before the rush gets to him. Second down for Dutmer and four yards to go. Five receivers out and he dumps it for Nyberg. He may have heard footsteps and those footsteps belonging to Brian Chismar. Demi going to see something that normally you don't see very much. Nyberg coming back across the middle after a pick by the tight end, and you'll see him drop it. And BYU you normally does not drop passes. Yeah, but when you've got Chismar ready to load up on you, you have to be concerned. And that's something the Nittany Lions hope that they can do in this game, intimidate those crossing patterns of BYU with their big hits, third and four. The out pattern again, complete. Number 88, Matt Odell brings this one in. Already, Vince, we're seeing a multitude of receivers used. Nyberg, Odell, Franzen, and Boyce have caught passes. Well, they get great protection, and they've continued along the line of scrimmage with those big offensive linemen. Odell runs and out, knows right where to run. The ball is placed perfectly, inbounds, and then out of bounds. Another first down. Matt Odell, the son of Phil Odell, who, by the way, played in the National Football League for a long period of time, one of BYU's greatest. Worked with Milt Plum in the Detroit Lions back in the 60s. First and 10 for the Cougars. 
Have a marker down. Motion perhaps in that offensive front. Or time may have expired. One of the two. Wendell Shelton, along with Bill Angley, are conversing about it. Offense, first down. It was the former rather than the latter. False start in that offensive front. Multitude of sets that Lavelle Edwards will use. And many times, the audible is critical to the young sophomore quarterback, Ty Detmer. They've, they've used a lot of uh, sets already, and uh, that has Penn State confused. You see the penalties. Penn State and BYU. BYU has committed far more. He can scramble, and he finds Bellini. Matt Bellini down at the 29-yard line in the grasp of Reginald Gibbons again. We should point out that Gibbons and McKenzie, two freshmen, are starting this game. Mark D'Onofrio is injured, could play, however, before the night's over. Bellini, you're going to see him come out of the backfield many a time. He runs a variety of routes and then finds the open spot. And Dittler, who can scramble, and I think that's been a big key to their success is the fact that Dittler can scramble, which he did right there when he hit Bellini. On second down, Detmer again. Boy, what protection. Now he looks long, Bellini. Incomplete. And a marker down again, this time in the Penn State secondary at the 10-yard line. Wendell Shelton out of the Southwest Conference has been busy in that white hat already in this opening drive. And all of them against BYU and Lavelle is some hot. Penn State came with a three-man rush, and here he is, Denver, saying, go down, go, go. And he lets it up and just overthrows it. But even if he had caught it, this is to Odell, but even if he had caught it, or rather Bellini, and even if he had caught it, uh, it, wouldn't have, it would have been in vain. But I've never seen a team, they may be one of the most penalized football teams in the country. Mm -hmm. We saw earlier how many penalties, twice as many as Penn State, and it's really cost them thus far in this drive. Uh, They've stopped themselves more than Penn State stopping them. Offensive pass interference, a push, a loss of down. So it is third down and a bundle now for the Cougars. They come with a blitz and he dumps it to Bellini. Sherrod Range will usher him out of bounds at the 32-yard line. But that will end this drive. They went to the uh, hot receiver, Tim. As a matter of fact, when they bring that many people, you can see him come off the corner. You can see how fast Bellini cut his route, looked for the football, and Dittmer let him have it. And that is their check when they get any kind of a blitz, is the hot receiver. And that's the hot receiver, Bellini, who quickly adjusted his route and looked for the football. Well, we only thought it ended the drive. It's fourth down and 12. Lavelle Edwards will go for it. So they don't bring in Chaffetz, and they don't try the punt to pin Penn State back. Looking for Franzen incomplete. Now you give the Nittany Lions great field position to start after your offense, frankly, had moved the ball quite well in the opening drive. Remember, they had the touchdown catch nullified. Would you like to... ESPN Networks. First and ten now for the Nittany Lions. Saka quarterback. And who else? Blair Thomas with his first carry. Already he picks up eight yards. It'll be second and two coming up. Saka, the quarterback. He starts. Tom Bill waiting in the wings. Blair Thomas, Leroy Thompson as running backs. The receivers are Daniels and Smith. The tight end is utilized a great deal by Saka. Dave Jacob. And up front, Roger Duffy, the center. This is a veteran group. The guards are Zott and Brzezinczyk. And the tackles, Tim Freeman and Matt McCartan. Second and two. Thomas, the second back through for the first down. Rocky Beagle is there to polish up on that hit out of Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin, the sophomore outside linebacker. Well, right away, we're seeing the contrast in styles. We saw BYU throw it, throw it, throw it. Now we're seeing Penn State run it, run it, run it. That's Roger French, the offensive coordinator for BYU, talking with his team, obviously, about the mistakes they made. 
penalty shutting down that last drive. Out of the split backs, Saka looks to throw. Yes! It's caught by Daniels. The junior from Sarasota, Florida, hauls one in. And, folks, that's a bigger completion than you'd think under normal conditions. Saka has a tendency to start cold and stay cold. He needed that completion. I think it's important. Good play action fake here on first down. Had plenty of time and found Daniels. Made a nice cut, and he went down with a football. Crutchfield, number 24, was defending for BYU, but he was off of him. At the 45 of BYU, Penn State with a first down. Leroy Thompson gets by Robinson and cuts back. There he runs into Bob Davis, another Butkus finalist. Number 36, a youngster that's looking forward to this ball game as Leroy Thompson carries it for Joe Paterno. Bob Davis, who made 137 tackles for BYU, can run. He's about a 4.65 on the 40. And he'll make a lot of tackles tonight. That was uh, Thompson, Leroy Thompson, the fullback, who really is an old halfback and is a very good runner. A lot of tackles for Davis through the year. On second and five, Blair Thomas cuts it back inside for another first down. At the 32-yard line, and the Cougar defense has Tim Adams as its nose, flanked by Patterson and Kafusi. Now, the linebacking core is the key, Beagle and Davis, the Butkus finalist. Chad Robinson, a fantastic pass rusher, and Dwayne Johnson, the outside linebackers. The corners are Crutchfield and Mitchell. They have gotten better as the year has gone on. And the safeties, Norman Dixon and Eric Bergeson, who at times can play the cornerback position in nickel and dime coverage. First and ten, Thomas again. A couple of yards, his shortest gain of the game thus far. You mentioned the secondary of BYU. The thing they have got to do is tackle, and they did miss some tackles on that last big run by Blair Thomas. They have got to tackle because they don't see Blair Thomas in the secondary a lot. And remember, this is a linebacking core that was heralded as the best overall unit at the beginning of the year by Sporting News. This BYU linebacking core more celebrated than the folks from linebacker U in State College. Second and eight. Saka rolling. Daniels, the intended receiver, incomplete. Speaking of those linebackers, we talked to Rocky Beagle, the sophomore, about what they could do to stop Blair Thomas. Blair Thomas is a great back, of course, and uh, I think he presents the fact that he, you know, he can bust the long runs, and uh, he put his head down for the for the tough yards, and uh, we have to, you know, stop all of the game plan. And I think if we stop Blair Thomas, you know, we can stop Penn State. Rocky pretty much said it himself, didn't he? He knows what he's talking about. He was coached by his father, so I would imagine that uh, he's pretty good at uh, coaching strategy and tactics. By the way, offensive holding on that last play, so that will back up Penn State. Their first miscue of this game. In case you're just joining us, BYU in its opening drive, three plays, three pl pass completions, one for a touchdown that was nullified. And then the drive stymied, and on fourth and 12, Lavelle Edwards gambled and lost. The hands by the offense, as it's declined, will be, be third down. So they elect to take the down rather than the penalty. Third and eight, coming up for Joe Paterno's team. His first visit to the West Coast since 1973. The delay, draw to Thomas, and Bergeson comes up to meet him. The question is, did Blair carry him out beyond the first down marker? I don't think he did. It was a good call on the third and long. Saka hadn't thrown the ball well in passing situations, and Blair Thomas, you got a better chance of going for the first down. Bergeson made the tackle, and that's one of many. He's probably the best tackler in the secondary. It's fourth and very short, and I rather suspect that being this short, that they'll go for it. Fourth down, a yard to go. Thomas appears to have the 
first down. Boy, he gets that body vertical so well. The moment he gets in the air, or parallel, actually, to the line of scrimmage, that was the key there. Well, I think the big key, Tim, was the offensive line because they got some uh, excellent blocking on the right side. Zott and McCartan and Jacob gave him just enough room in order for him to get through. And Tim Freeman, the left tackle, pulled and got in there. I don't even know why they're measuring it. I, I thought without any question that they made the first down. Well, you look at Joe Paterno pacing up at the top of your screen, right, right to the line, Judge. <laughs> I'm sure he's saying you spotted it well. You did a good job. We'll take another look at it from ground level. You can see the thrust of the offensive line on the right side with Freeman pulling. And Blair Thomas got up in the air and leaned forward, but he had some room to lean. So it's first and ten now, and they go back to the eye set. Boy, on first down this season, put it on the ground and pick up six with Blair Thomas in your backfield. Why not? He gets it again. And I think he got six. Chad Robinson, the whip linebacker, the senior from American Fork, Utah, made the tackle number nine. He got six uh, on his own because uh, the fullback, Jurak, number 34, didn't block anybody. And he cut back inside of the block. You can see the two tacklers there. And finally, as you mentioned, Chad Robinson, number nine, who is an excellent uh, outside linebacker, made the tackle from the backside. Eleventh play of the Penn State drive at the 17. Behind Thompson, Thomas cracks through to the 13-yard line. Bob Davis made the tackle. Well, this is a sweep to uh, Thomas, uh, and this is not the real premier part of their running game is the sweep. Their tight end probably doesn't block as well as the sweep on the sweep as he does on some other plays. So you're going to see the sweep from time to time, but it's not one of their best plays. Yeah, he's, a, he's one of those guys that needs to get the ball deep in the backfield and then go straight up field. Tom. From tackle to tackle, he's a much better runner, but uh, their offense is not designed as much for the sweep. Time of possession a key, and there's the pass intended for number 24, O.J. McDuffie, a bit overthrown. And on third down, that will bring up a field goal drive from Tarassi. Crutchfield with fine coverage that time. Number 24, the sophomore from Pasadena, California for BYU. Well, that was an uh, interesting call. Yeah, third, it was. Third and uh, one, less than one. And you come out with Saka, who has not been a top thrower. Probably should have come out and see if he had a chance to run the football instead of putting it up. He probably would have been much better off running it. But in any event, now they've got to go to the field goal. It'll be a 31-yard try for Tarassi. It's been an outstanding comeback here for that young man. And he gives the Nittany Lions their first lead of the game. It's 3-0 with 7-11 remaining on the clock. With Penn State leading BYU 3-0, Cougar place kicker Jason Chaffetz tied the score late in the first quarter with a 20-yard field goal. The Nittany Lions quickly regained the lead early in the second quarter when a blown BYU defensive assignment led to a 24-yard touchdown reception from Tony Saka to Terry Smith. Ray Tarassi missed the extra point, making the score 9-3 in favor of Joe Paterno's squad. Halfway through the second quarter, BYU took the lead for the first time when Ty Detmer scored from the one on a naked bootleg, making the score 10-9 Cougars. On the following possession, Penn State moved the ball down the field behind the legs of Blair Thomas, setting up a 36-yard Ray Tarassi field goal, which pulled the Nittany Lions ahead of the Cougars. So with Penn State leading BYU 12-10, Ty Detmer and the potent Cougar air attack moved the ball effectively into Penn State territory, but gave way to a 22-yard field goal by Jason Chaffetz with under a minute to play in the first half. Now, BYU leads Penn State 13-12, and when we return, we'll pick up the action early in the second half in the 1989 Holiday Bowl, here on ESPN Classic. And today, this year, to wish good luck to all ESPN.com Fantasy Football League participants. Go, you guys. Beautiful. It's ESPN Fantasy Football 2001, the classiest fantasy football on the internet. 
It's primo. You're watching ESPN Classic. Where Shamu puts on his show, San Diego, California, the SeaWorld Holiday Bowl, the 12th annual underway, just underway, third quarter, BYU with a one-point lead. And on second and four, Blair Thomas gets four and more down to the 39-yard line of BYU. Craig Patterson, number 51, the junior from Castledale, Utah, making the stop. Penn State came off the ball and knocked BYU back, and I think that's one of the big points in the second half. Will the Penn State line dominate the BYU line, which will be a big key in this ballgame? Saka performed well in the first half, overshadowed perhaps by Detmer's numbers in the 245 yards, but he played well. Uh, he certainly did and threw some timely passes, and, uh, of course, the big pass uh, out to Smith uh, was very critical and was very alert on his part. The cornerback Mitchell was gone somewhere, and Saka was able to see that right away and threw the ball out to Smith. And he's five of nine, as you can see, in the first half, and that's pretty good for Saka. Daniels up at the top of your screen along with Smith, both set at the same side of the playing field on first and ten. Thompson. But Blair Thomas can block too, can he? Look at him take Chad Robinson right out of the play for the moment and provide the room for Leroy Thompson down to the 35-yard line. And that's something the NFL scouts love to see, and this is Blair's last chance before the NFL draft. Well, Blair Thomas can do it all. He can block, he can run, he can catch the ball. Here he is blocking now. Knocks Robinson back and gives uh, Thompson a lot of room. But look at number 71, Freeman, down the field. Mm -hmm. The whole left side of the... Penn State line knocked BYU back five yards. Second and six. Thomas wrapped up by Rocky Beagle. The sophomore from Wisconsin Rapids, Wisconsin, as Paterno looks on. Beagle missed a couple of games. He has some knee injuries. Really does play the run well, and he looks up to Bob Davis, and those two youngsters uh, work well. They're a cohesive combo. Yes, Beagle's just a sophomore. Davis is a uh, senior. But uh, they both hit uh, very much alike, and that is hard, and they both run to the football well. Third and four for the Nittany Lions. Saka with Robinson in pursuit. Thomas incomplete. Davis in coverage. Penn State fans would like to see interference. Give Davis some credit, though, staying right with Blair. Dropping back in coverage. I thought Saka showed a lot of poise right here because he was under heavy pressure by Robinson. He gets out and then takes his time and puts a nice touch on this football down the field to Blair Thomas. Blair makes a quick turn and almost catches it. Ray Tarassi has come onto the field. He'll try a 51-yard field goal. The sophomore from Pittsburgh, whom we told you about at halftime. Markowitz to hold again. It's true, but is it long enough? It is! Ray Tarassi! This game looks like it's going to be a field goal game. A lot of them in the first half. And it's difficult to score except by the field goal so far. This is ESPN Classic. And Stacy Corley's back deep along with Eric Mortensen for BYU awaiting the Tarassi kick. And when you grow up in Pennsylvania, you have an opportunity from a city like Pittsburgh to go to a college environment like the one in State College. It is a dream come true. Tarassi walked on for his chance. He promptly kicks it out of bounds and the marker comes down and he'll have to do it again. Dr. Jerry Punch is standing by down on the sidelines. Jerry? Well, Timmy, we're with a couple of proud parents. I'm with Ray Tarassi Sr. and his wife, Lorraine. They are the parents of Ray Jr. He just set to just tie a holiday bowl record with his third field goal. And uh, you guys are going to be pretty happy. This, this kid has really come back from a lot of adversity early in the year. Yes, he has. He's come back quite a ways. He's done a great job, and we're very, very proud of him. 
you know, he missed that first extra point, but uh, you knew that that's uh, they call him Mr. Automatic on the sidelines. You were a little surprised at that. I was surprised. I'd like to look at the replay of that and see how that uh, came through the uprights or whether it was just a little wide. I can't tell from where we were sitting. It was, uh, looked like a good kick to me. Well, he walked on at Penn State, made the team, became a starter, and certainly it's been all uphill from there. A Holiday Bowl record set by Ray Terassi Jr., his parents, his proud parents here on the sidelines watching tonight. All right, Jerry, thank you. And Vince, you're right. They're here. And Dad is proud and also a little cynical. Oh, yeah. He'd like to see that, yeah, that extra point there. again. And, and you can tell the pride in Mama. Boy, <laughs> with those eyes, she is proud of her son. Mortensen from the 10. Down at the 19-yard line, Keith Goganis, a reserve linebacker, made the stop. And we've got a marker down at the point of the tackle. Wendell Shelton has been busy, our referee out of the Southwest Conference. And it's against Penn State. Not a flagrant, but a face mask nonetheless. Gauguin is perhaps the guilty party. Let's take a look. I'm sure he probably is. There is the face mask, no question about that. Gauguin is number 42. He turns that hit on him a little bit as he pulls him down, Eric Mortensen. So from the 24-yard line, after the five-yard penalty, the non-flagrant foul by Goganis, you see him on the sidelines, BYU takes over. Whittingham, the lone setback. The play fake to him, and Detmer's in trouble. Finds Smith, and he drops it. That rarely happens to Detmer when he throws to his tight end. BYU's possessions in the first half. Remember that long drive in the first half. In fact, on the third play, they had a touchdown that was nullified. They lost it on downs. Then, 44-yard drive that ended in an interception. Then the field goal after a 31-yard drive. 67 yards on 11 plays for the touchdown. And then 71 yards leading to the field goal to give them the lead at the intermission. Fifteen to thirteen, Penn State with a two-point lead. Not quite three minutes gone in the second half. Bellini and another marker down after the tackle at the 28-yard line. Reginald Gibbons, the freshman, made the stop. They like Gibbons in pass coverage because of that speed. Although he is a freshman. He does have 4-4-5, four, 40 speed. And it's a push against BYU. That's the second time we've seen that. As a matter of fact, we saw that call made in that first drive that ended on downs when BYU had the touchdown nullified. Well, I'm not sure exactly what we're talking about with a push. But Bellini got... Uh, lost in there and then came out. Uh, Penn State had a blitz on to the outside. And again, Dittmer just took his time and waited for Bellini to clear and threw it to him. But again, penalty con penalties continue to hurt BYU. Well, Dittmer doesn't understand it either. Bellini, I believe, is the person that they're pointing to because the marker was thrown right at him after he had been tackled. Maybe he pushed off prior to making the grab. But it is a loss of down, and that, again, is the second time that that's happened. Third and 23 now for the Cougars at their own 12. Pressure. Detmer gets away. And he gets out of bounds at the 22-yard line. Richard McKenzie, the other freshman, made the stop. And McKenzie can run, and that gives you a pretty good idea of how fast uh, Detmer is in order to run, a, run a, He didn't run away from him, but uh, he really went up the field before he finally stepped out of bounds. McKenzie is a sought-after player, and uh, is a 4 5 40. And here we're having, for the first time, the first punt of the football game by Kaufman. Number 86. First kick of the ball game. Spiral coming down to the 39-yard line, and McDuffie has it again. And he's down at the 46-yard line.
Are you? 15-13 to 13 here in 1989. Penn State with the ball at their own 46. And they dump it out to Smith incomplete. Daniels, I beg your pardon, the intended receiver. He, along with Smith, number 8 and 26, were in the general area of that errant pass from Saka. Well, it was errant because somebody was right up in his face. Probably number 9, Chad Robinson, off the corner. That's one of the things, Vince, that has been missing, by the way, from... Penn State on the other side, D'Onofrio not playing. He's their leading sacker. He has 11, and of course, Robinson, 9 with BYU. They have missed uh, D'Onofrio. Second and 10. Blair Thomas penetrating BYU territory at the 48-yard line, and let's get an injury update now from Jerry Punch. Well, Timmy, senior strong guard Dave Brzezentek was helped off the field in the last offensive series. He is now sitting on the bench having been examined by the doctors here. They have a bandage on his right knee. It looks to be a spray, hopefully nothing more, but it is doubtful he will return tonight. Jerry Sean Love does have some experience. In fact, Brzezentek took his position, really, on the depth chart. He's in the game now, number 57, on the left side, protecting Saka. Quick drop, and Dave Jacobs has it. Jacob had the critical touchdown reception against West Virginia, if you'll recall, in a game we had earlier this year. Chad Robinson hauls him down after a 12-yard pickup. I had to, you have to be impressed with Saka because he hasn't had the touch that he has right here. That's a nice touch ball. In the past, he'd take that ball and throw it entirely too hard. But a nice pass right over the middle to Jacob for the first down. 10.54 remaining in the third quarter, and Leroy Thompson bounces outside. Ferguson runs him down, and a marker comes down as well. I know we're early in the third quarter, Vince, but this could be, if Penn State goes in, and we've only had one punt in the game thus far, for the first time, this would give a team more than one score in its lead. It would take two scores for BYU to grab the lead, and this has been a seesaw game to this point. Well, it certainly has. The offensive line really didn't get uh, any room there, but Thompson makes a nice cut back to the outside, and he's an old converted tailback to fullback, and he can run and makes a nice run here. Offense, 10-yard penalty. But it's called back. Holding. Joe Paterno's seen... Only a few of those this year. This is a team that is not penalized that often. Penn State football means running, playing defense, and special teams and not being penalized. First and 12. And again, pressure from the backside from Chad Robinson as Saka is stopped at the 35-yard line. Well, you need, don't need to get Penn State in this kind of a situation or Saka in this kind of a situation. You need to uh, stay on rhythm. Mm -hmm. And when you throw the ball, you want to throw it when you want to throw it and not be forced to throw it, which is their ball game. At the 35-yard line, second and 10. Thomas. Oh, nice cut back. With a Matador style of run that time. 19 yards the game. And the best run of the night so far. I would say it's the best run of the night. That's as fine a run as I've seen in a long, long time. He has to cut back, makes a nice cut here, back across the green, then comes back up field with a quick step, and then he should have butted right over the official. <laughs> Run slap over him, <laughs> and then finally Bob Davis makes the tackle. He's all over the field, the linebacker for BYU. And on first down, Thompson now outside. Leroy Thompson scores. Touchdown. <laughs> Penn State historically. Comes on strong with its running game in the second half. 
They'll fatigue the opposition. And they did it, done it again. Leroy Thompson looks extremely quick here. And what BYU has got to do is tackle in the secondary. And they didn't do that very well. Ferguson, he runs right over Ferguson here. And then continues in for the touchdown. The extra point is critical now because of the two-point conversion in college football. That makes it a nine-point lead. So it would take more than a touchdown and a two-point conversion for BYU to gain a tie. It's 22 to 13. Penn State with a lead over BYU. 9.38 remaining. Blair Thomas starts it, but Leroy Thompson finishes up. And Penn State football, powerful Eastern football, has the advantage now in this Holiday Bowl. Happy holidays from John and Mary in our Fuji blimp. They're providing the shots. John is a senior captain for Fuji and has flown blimps all over the free world. We're happy to have him here in San Diego, providing us with the beautiful shots that we have, our aerial shots at the SeaWorld Holiday Bowl. Tim Brando along with Vince Dooley and Dr. Jerry Punch. Penn State with a nine-point lead after a devastating drive to open the third quarter. Stacy Corley from his one. Out to the 31-yard line. Bob Davis, number 36, has been chasing all night long. He's getting a little tired trying to catch a relatively fresh Leroy Thompson and doesn't get to him. Leroy Thompson, back in his old tailback position, gets a nice block by Redmond. And he loves to run out of the eye. He's originally a tailback, was, but was forced to go to fullback, and he can run. Out of Knoxville, Tennessee. Has closed out the season very, very well for Coach Paterno. Tennessee, Paterno. baby. Tennessee. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, play well, yeah. some Rocky Top in State College. Detmer. Oh, my goodness. Boy, that will only net about a yard, but it was fun to watch, wasn't it? Getting away from the Penn State pressure. Ryan Chismar, number 28, made the tackle, the inside linebacker. Yeah, what he sees is a blitz on, and he sees uh, Andre Collins coming after him. But again, he's got great instincts of where to go, and he gets back to the line of scrimmage. So instead of having second and 17, it's second and 10. Out of San Antonio, Texas, interestingly, he was being recruited by several other schools on the West Coast. We'll talk about that when we get an opportunity. Detmer dumps it to Whittingham. Past the 40 to the 44-yard line. Andre Collins made the stop and quickly the flag. Uh, they're quick with those flags right now because it did get a little nasty in the second quarter, you'll recall. Sherrod Range may have come in late that time. Ian Nyberg tied up. Well, you can tell Joe is not pleased with it. Too many penalties. There's Bob Davis getting a blow. He'll need all of the rest he can get. Dead ball, personal foul, defense. 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, let's see the personal foul. Mm -hmm. Range. Comes in a little bit late. Sherrod Range kept that block alive against Nyberg. Just shoved Nyberg to the... Right in front of the referee, he, he did it again. And you just can't do that. So Sherrod Range is guilty. And he costs his team. Balls at the 41-yard line of Penn State. BYU trailing by nine. It's the draw to Whittingham. Brian Chismar made the stop. And let there be no doubt, Brian Chismar represents Penn State's defense. We're going to be ticket takers, and uh, to come across our area, you're going you're to have to give us a ticket. And uh, or we're going to be giving the tickets out, and uh, giving the tickets and taking the, the toll. So uh, if, if they come out and they can complete it and we don't hit the receivers, then it's, it's going to be a long game. But uh, I plan on giving a lot of tickets and taking a lot of toll. Nice quote, and that's the kind of 
player you like to have is a strong safety, and he's a converted strong safety now playing linebacker. Well, it seems like that they convert up. They go from strong safety to linebacker. They move all around, and most of them have played other positions other than just being down linemen. Speaking of down linemen, Rich Schoenwolf is down right now at the 40-yard line, and Schoenwolf is someone they can ill afford to lose. Not a lot of depth in that down three for Penn State. Well, let's see what happens. This uh, Whittingham, his Sean Wolf, coming back in number 75. He goes down and can't tell. All I know is that uh, the Penn State linemen have been rushing, 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 and you get very tired. And when you're that tired, you are susceptible to injuries. Hey, IBM. The turmoil of the 60s fading away. The 70s was a time to mellow out. That's why I'm easy. Now, TV Music For You brings you Smooth 70s, a 34-song collection of the greatest easy-listening classics of our time. If I could save time in a bottle, please come to Boston for the springtime. But it was just my imagination. Seventies features the best easy listening hits and top artists of a great decade of music. So I sing you to sleep after the loving. And when we get behind closed doors, she ran calling wildfire. Summer breeze makes me feel fine. I felt the beat of my mind. Seventies on two cassettes or two CDs. I like to eat. Call this toll-free number now for Smooth Seventies. Two cassettes, nineteen ninety-eight. Two CDs, twenty-six ninety-eight. Plus five fifty shipping. Have your credit card ready and call now. This Sunday on ESPN Classic, when a quarterback is taken out of the game too soon, you guys made a mistake. He must find a way. You're going to put me into the body of another man to make the comeback of a lifetime. You said we were going to get to the Super Bowl. Yes, that's true. If it's meant to be, Academy Award winner Warren Beatty stars in a real classic. Heaven can wait. This Sunday night at nine Eastern, six Pacific, only on ESPN Classic. 8.03 remaining. It's 22-13. Penn State leading as Schoenwolf is ushered to the sidelines by the Penn State trainers. Dr. Jerry Punch is down there, and I'm sure he'll be trying to get the information on Schoenwolf. Todd Berger, number 67, a sophomore from Clark, New Jersey, has come into the game for him. Second and six with 7.55 remaining. to Franzen down at the 23-yard line. Gary Brown, the free safety, made the tackle, number 27 in white. You continue to be impressed with his precision routes. Look at uh, Franzen right here. Now he'll come back in motion. Right here, the ball is snapped. Now he curls right back in, and he's looking. He's sitting right down in that open zone. And now Dittmer hits him. And they're down the field again. He Nobody is. runs routes to me with the precision of BYU. He is the deep threat, friends, and he caught nine touchdown aerials this year from Detmer. <laughs> Humphreys had an opportunity at the pickoff that time. Andy Boyce, the intended receiver, the junior from Salt Lake City. It's a tremendous play by Humphreys. And we, they haven't had good play at the cornerback position. Here's Boyce. Coming out, and we're going to see Humphreys come up and respond very quickly back to the curl. Almost an interception. That's a tremendous quickness by Humphreys. Coming back in, a tremendous play by Humphreys on Boyce. Sophomore from Akron, Ohio, playing behind Hernan Henderson at that cornerback spot. Usually the defenders don't close as quickly 
as Humphreys did on a curl type route, but he really closed in a hurry. We've had a number of stoppages in play in this game for various and sundry reasons, and we're having another one now. It may have something to do with the clock again. The play clock, you'll recall, malfunctioned for a time in the first half, and now Wendell Shelton comes over to tell Lavelle Edwards what the story is, and now I believe he's going to even talk upstairs to see what's going on. This is not a replay official he's about to dial. Hmm. <laughs> Which one? Try the bat phone. If there's a red one down there, pick it up. Ty Detmer. You see the, the passes, so many of them, underneath that coverage 15 of his completions under the 20 yard range well that's part of the control passing attack in fact that that is the control passing attack has not thrown the ball long as as well and perhaps maybe between now and next year that that'll be one of the priorities to work on the long ball it's interesting, too, and when we speak of Detmer, this is a youngster that, that knows the psychology of the game, maybe ahead of his time with respect to the mental aspects of being a college quarterback. Jim McMahon really worked to build himself up physically. He spent a lot of time in the weight room. Maybe Ty will do just that. Well, he is so far ahead of anybody that I've ever seen as a sophomore, and that's just McMahon, and uh, the statistics uh, show him way ahead of McMahon. Now, we still don't know what, what happened, but we're getting ready back to start play again. Folks, we're working on it. We'd love to know what the problem is. The play clock seems to be operable. Joe says, I want to know what's going on. 7.17 remaining in the third quarter and 25 seconds on the play clock. And apparently we had a mix-up on downs, and Detmer talked about it. Apparently they've rectified the problem. And now the bad news for Paterno is it's second down and not third down. And that's only because of what we're seeing along with you. That's our speculation. Second and ten. Branson, first down, BYU. In the arms of Brian Chismar at the eight-yard line. Left down by the 28, Brian Chismar continue to be amazed at the way Dittmer looks and frans in to run to the right spot. Now, right in between the defenders. There he goes. They know where to go. They keep that equal distance between the two, and Dittmer hit him right on the button. And I'm continually amazed at how little pressure we're seeing from Penn State's defensive front. That was a three-man rush. It's hard to get much pressure. Fumbles it, but he's on top of it at the 13-yard line. Frank Giannetti made the stop. Events to go back to that point, and I know that without a linebacker like D'Onofrio, who means so much in your pass rushing game, that they're having problems there, and they have to keep as many people as they can back to protect against the pass in the secondary. They do need to get more pressure on him, though, don't they? Well, they do. They've got to keep mixing it up, trying to find what the best way to go. Three-man rush, four-man rush, four men of the same size, and there's D'Onofrio. They could use him. The leading sacker with 11, but he's been hurt. Second and 13. Detmer for Franzen. At the one-yard line, another fantastic catch with Leonard Humphreys draped all around him. Just an unbelievable catch, but very typical of Franzen and BYU. Watch this cutback. Humphreys is on him. Good. How could you cover him any better? What an unbelievable catch. And look where he puts the ball. Just about the only place you can put the ball in that kind of a situation. That's the good news. But the bad news, it's third and one. <laughs> well, they're close enough. It's, it's third and a half a yard. Sneak. Three backs and Whittingham in motion. Oh, look. Play fake. Same result as a sneak, perhaps. <laughs> Touchdown. BYU sneak. And with 
34 remaining in the third quarter. More importantly, this is a drive that Ty Detmer had to have to get his team back in this game within one field goal of taking the lead. And Chapin has his extra point blocked. <laughs> he lined it too low, entirely too low. He hit it about in the middle. Didn't get any height on it. Within one field goal of a tie, I beg your pardon. Oh. Here's Detmer again. Comes out with a naked. He's putting the pressure, trying to throw the ball, but watch this move on Willie Thomas, who's in great position to make the tackle, stops and slips back inside for the touchdown. What a play. The youngster from San Antonio has put on a show. Welcome back to Jack Murphy Stadium in San Diego. 22 to 19, our score, 534 remaining in the third quarter with Vince Dooley and Dr. Jerry Punch. I am Tim Brando. Bowl week is underway in earnest. Texas Tech, a winner last night in the All-American Bowl in Birmingham. Tonight's game apparently going down to the wire. Looks that way now. And tomorrow night in Jacksonville, West Virginia and Major Harris taking on the Clemson Tigers of the ACC. O.J. McDuffie back deep, awaiting the Earl Kaufman kick. This one may head out of bounds. It does. And Kaufman will have to do it again. Here's Dittmer again on the touchdown. And you'll see May come out and make a nice block. But Dittmer right here. There's May making his block. Watch him stop on a dime. Come right back inside of Willie Thomas, number 25, and scope. And where's the Outland Trophy candidate, you ask? Well, well, he, well he makes a block, but... Yeah. The Outland Trophy winner says, well, I can sit back, take it easy, and enjoy myself as Ty Detmer gets the touchdown. Well, he did go in and hug him, I think, right there at the end. <laughs> That's all right, Muhammad. Why not enjoy? He's a fine quarterback. Kamloops, Canada is his home. And McDuffie from his 11. Nice tackle. From the 10 -yard line. Mark Neal made the stop for the Cougars. And the scoring drive for BYU, 10 plays, 68 yards. Again, 356 off the clock. And Detmer with the uh, well-choreographed quarterback sneak for the touchdown. <laughs> That's two of them now for Detmer. One-yard runs on the corner. And the Nittany Lion offense doing it their way in this half as well. Remember the last time they had it, Leroy Thompson and Blair Thomas were quite a running tandem. Six and seven yards at a chunk. There goes Blair again. He has six, he has seven and more. Out to the 43-yard line of BYU. BYU is being knocked back off the ball by this offensive line. They're in two tights, and as the ball game goes on, now watch this cutback. They continue to push down the field. He makes the cutback all the way back to the left side, and then up the field after getting a good block from Daniel. Rocky Beagle finally hauled him down at the 44 of BYU. Sack of the throw. For Daniels, incomplete. About a yard overthrown with Brian Mitchell on his heels. Mitchell was not out of position that time. Well, first down, and here's just about the end of it. Just a little out of his reach for Daniel. Mitchell defending, number 30. Daniel had him by a yard. Pass just a bit overthrown. Second and ten. That's the time remaining in the third quarter. Bolts ahead from a lateral position to the 40-yard line. And as the game goes on, his numbers pick up. 27 rushes for a 151 yard. His 4-yard gains become 10-yard gains. Then his 10-yard gains become 20-yard gains from half to half. Well, this is the way the offense goes. As the ball game goes on, you continue to wear down as he maintains his efficiency. Third and six. 
Lane Johnson is blitzing. And Saka is running to McDuffie. Incomplete. Mitchell knocked it away. Brian Mitchell, who was burned earlier, has been right where you'd want him defensively the last two plays. Well, Saka throwing off balance, hangs it up. There's McDuffie, and Mitchell turns at the right time and gets a hand into it. Mitchell has had a tough time at cornerback the last three or four games, though he's had a had a great string early in the year. In fact, they really considered him at the beginning of the year as their best man-to-man -man coverage guy in that backfield. And they have him. Whoa, look at here. Could look be at a here. fake. Smith out to Tyson Thomas. Down to the 31-yard line for a first down Penn State. Special teams. The kicking game, that's a way that Joe Paterno will beat you time after time. And after 18 years, Edwards finally sees it. As Smith rolls out and hits Tyson, Thomas, number one, a cornerback. Here we go again. Smith, nice touch on the pass to Tyson Thomas, a cornerback who was flanked out on the punt formation team. Terry Smith was a quarterback in high school in Monroeville, PA. The drive remains alive now. Thomas runs into Davis. Pick up of about four, and we have another marker down in the secondary after the play was dead. The back judge threw it. Here it is. Personal foul against the Cougars. And it is number seven. You saw him shout seven. They asked, who was it? He said seven. Wendell Shelton did. Eric Ferguson. That's the second time he's been involved. He was the focal point in the first half, you'll recall. Mm -hmm. Now, that's a costly penalty. And that is, I don't know how many now for them. That's probably about eight or about uh, 70 yards. And they have been penalized coming into this ball game about 109 times twice as many as BYU. Or as Penn as State. Penn State, rather, excuse me. On first and ten, Thompson. Thompson, touchdown! that the BYU defense is getting tired and that's what this running game is all about. There's Davis, for instance. He overran. Here's a missed tackle by Crutchfield, number 24 in the secondary, and Leroy Thompson looks fresh. I mean, really fresh. And the extra point by Tarassi is good. BYU will score with a great deal of flash but then Penn State comes right back and pounds it right in their face. And it's 29 to 19 with 320 remaining in the third quarter. Are you right here on ESPN Classic every weeknight at 8 Eastern and Pacific? <laughs> well, that's good. It's nice to see a player finally say hello to his little sister. This guy was a great back in uh, Knoxville, and we tried hard to get him. Came down to visit us and made the decision to go to Penn State, and I'm sure it was a great one for him. Another example, though, of how many players from Tennessee have a tendency to go to the Big Ten or to the Eastern schools. The up-back picks it up. Scott Charlton for BYU. And they've got good field position. Let's get down to Jerry Punch. Well, the news is not good from, from the Penn State defensive side. Defensive tackle Rich Schoenwald has a significant injury. Now, he told me a minute ago that what he was doing was making a tackle. He had his arm extended, and someone hit him from behind, possibly hyperextending his elbow. He has this elbow. It's actually his left elbow. He has it in a sling. He has taken the shoulder pads off. And the leader of the defensive line for Penn State, Rich Schoenwald, will be out of it the rest of this evening. Timmy? All right, thank you, Dr. Punch. The ball at the 43-yard line. BYU, after that line drive kick, comes away with good field position for Ty Detmer. Andy Boyce in motion. 
fade pattern for Nyberg. He's got it at the 40-yard line of Penn State. Well, the jump man had to blitz on, and again, Dittmer continues to read the coverages and make the right decision. Hung the ball up, and the Nyberg made a nice catch. 23 of 34, 316 yards, one interception. I asked him if he had had a better half than the first half we saw against Washington State back in September. He said, no. He said, really, I haven't had a great two halves in one game all year. That's well, a player that's broken 11 NCAA records this year. Well, he might have it tonight, the way he's going. Whittingham with a big hole. Down to the 30-yard line, Willie Thomas, the right corner for Penn State, number 25, to make the stop. That's that's uh, their running play. That draw trap cuts back in against the trap, and Whittingham is a tough little run. He's one of the captains. Look, gets under him, and Willie Thomas makes the tackle, number 25. Second down and two. 2.35 and counting in the third quarter. Cadence was a problem. On the third hut, there was movement. Tony Madison in the game for Gianetti. May have been guilty, number 59. Mission accomplished, another first down for BYU. And I'm sure that Jerry Sandusky is getting frustrated. He's tried just about everything you can try. He's rushed uh, six or seven. He's rushed only three. He's played man. He's, he's played zone. He's played it all. And Dittmer continues to read the defense so well. Sandusky, the longtime defensive coordinator to Joe Paterno. Stacy Corley. Stacy Corley keeps the motor running. We asked Ty Detmer about his unselfish play. I haven't really looked at it as a individual game. You know, I, I don't really pay much attention to the, the records and things like that. So uh, right now, just concentrating on trying to win. It'll be a big boost for us in the polls next year. And whatever happens with me, it won't matter. One game can't make a whole season, you know. And as far as next year, I'm just going to come out next year and have fun and play like we did this year. Remember this about Ty Detmer, and we have Willie Thomas injured the cornerback on that last play, but remember this about Ty Detmer. This is a young man that was not considered a Heisman candidate at all this year. The numbers alone, his statistics got him the ninth position after the final ballots were placed this year, and that was ahead of Blair Thomas, who finished 10th. Next year, he will be a front runner for the Heisman, and a great performance here against a team like Penn State only adds to his credibility. Well, a lot of people said he was a, a great kept secret, uh, but uh, we, it wasn't a secret to us because mm -hmm. we saw him against Washington State. In the meantime, let's see if we can find out what happened to uh, Willie Thomas. Here he is trying to get rid of Nyberg. Mm. He bounces off of the runner. Corley, that may have been a stinger, that, that 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 kind of shoulder injury that you get or the jam neck well, as that, he ran into Corley. There's a nerve that goes down that neck, and that could well be it, though it looks like they're moving with their knee. Mm -hmm. And when they start to open those knees, that really bothers you. Here he is. Let's see. Watch his knee. He gets, he knocked, yeah. gets knocked up in the air. It's so very difficult to tell, but again... Dr. Punch is down there, and I'm sure we'll get an update once once he's back to the sidelines. A lot of injuries. Hard-hitting game so far. This is an extremely hard-hitting game. And one of his own players, I guess, uh, hits him. They're definitely looking at the knee, the right knee, right now. Number 59, Matisak, comes in. And maybe he just falls on him. But it, which apparently he did. Well, the trainers were clearly checking his knee. You're right. This has been a hard-hitting football game. I think that Penn State felt like they were going to win it and win it physically, and they worked that hard. Mm -hmm. Prior to coming down here, they worked as hard as they could. 
possibly work. BYU says they're not going to physically just whip us. So that, consequently, both teams are motivated. No question it's the knee. Oh, hey, he's not able to move it. And it's amazing. Sometimes you look at a play, and it really appeared that, if anything, the shoulder may have been mm -hmm. what was injured after he was hit by Corley. Corley ran into him. He really didn't run into Stacy. And Thomas is replaced by just a freshman, Tyson Thomas, number one. And he's Thomas made that catch on the fake punt. He's, uh, he's an excellent athlete, but he's just a freshman, 5'7", 155 pounds. And that's going to be difficult to be taking on a Whittingham and a Bellini, two tough running backs. Don't think Ty Detmer doesn't know that. Not Wouldn't only we? taking them on, but also playing pass defense against these superb re route receivers. Detmer goes in his direction to Bellini. Underneath, down to the 13-yard line. Thomas, by the way, comes up to make the stop, or contributes on the stop, along with number 27, free safety Gary Brown. But that's a first down, and BYU trailing by 10, with 1.39 remaining, keeps this drive alive. Yeah, I don't think I've seen anybody that enjoys a game as much as Dittmer. He really enjoys playing the game. San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium packed to capacity. This game has been a sellout since November. And then when Penn State was picked as the entrant, it even grew larger. Dittmer. these offenses neither Penn State or BYU can figure out one another's offense there's Detmer and what a nice touch on this football he throws it out there and Humphreys who is on him his his boys right here now Humphreys is running with him as the extra point now I guess we'll get back to the what happened later Chaffetz puts it through and Penn State's lead is down to three. One fifteen remaining in the third quarter of the SeaWorld Holiday Bowl. SPN Networks. Let's see if we can find the uh, boys. Here he is. Comes back in motion. They're very tight in there because he wants to have room to run in the corner. And he goes by Humphreys. Watch this touch on the ball. How could you throw one any better? Very tight which gives him a lot of room out to the corner where he can use his finesse to go by Humphreys, the cornerback. Boy, can they run routes. 57 yards, 2.05 off the clock this time, and Andy Boyce from Salt Lake City, Utah, the recipient of this Detmer aerial. Earl Kaufman to kick again. McDuffie a yard deep. the 26 yard line mark neal number 41 again in to make the stop all three of the <laughs> receivers have been involved in big plays today that you'd expect both andy boyce franzen and brent nyberg all three of them involved in critical receptions that led to touchdowns or in boyce's case was a touchdown and you don't talk about when you talk about those fellas you don't talk about four four or four or five speeds what they can do, all these guys, is they run precision routes, and they know when to cut. And Dittmer, of course, puts them all on, on the numbers. Now it's Saka's turn, and he gives it to Thompson, who has been carrying the ball more and more here in the second half. Bob Davis made the stop. Thompson with a couple of touchdowns rushing. Davis looking to rally his defense, a defense that has been torn apart in the last two drives. By, by being able to keep the football and answering the scores of Penn State, this gives this BYU defense and Davis an opportunity to rest a little bit. Hmm. Second and seven for the Nittany Lions. 
This could be the final play of the quarter. Thomas at the 31-yard line. Tim Adams, the nose tackle, made the stop. And BYU's happy when they can contain Thomas to just a four-yard pickup. Absolutely. Number 97, the nose guard. Tremendous play, playing off the blocker, and here he is making the tackle. He's big stout, about 6'4", 270. And his father also coached him. There's a lot of players out here that call us with coaches. The family tree evident on both sides tonight, both with Penn State and BYU. The Nittany Lions lead. Welcome back to the SeaWorld Holiday Bowl. And Tony Saka's job is uh, pretty simple. Hold on to the football and score. Yeah, well, this is a big down for Penn State because now scores have been answering scores. And if they don't answer this one, then BYU is going to have the football. Third and five. They got to have a big play here for a first down. Smith in motion. And Saka opens the fourth quarter to Thomas, and what a button hook. He makes the catch, does a 360, and leaves Cougars in his backside. Eric Bergeson finally made the stop, but what a move here. But what a nice job by Sacker. Coming through, puts it in there, and then here we go. Watch the move by Blair Thomas. A complete 360, then keeps his feet, breaks two tackles, and finally is hauled down by Dixon, number two, out of New Orleans. So they convert on the third and five. First and ten now at the BYU 40. Quick hitch out to McDuffie. Incomplete. And Sackler's upset with himself. Mm, yeah. One bouncer. We're at San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. And our storyline, SeaWorld Holiday Bowl 1989. Detmer, 335 yards in the air. A couple of touchdown runs. Thompson with two touchdown runs. Thomas with his usual 100-plus yard evening, 156 to be exact, and only one punt tonight. Up and down the playing field for three quarters plus. On second and ten, Thomas to the short side of the field with a marker down. He may have picked up four yards. Chad Robinson made the tackle. He, along with Davis, along the sidelines, the two linebackers. Got a flag in the early indication. It might be holding. Movement, no, movement. Even the five-yard penalty, though, is drastic for Joe Paterno. He knows that if he puts his quarterback and his offense in a second-and-long or third-and-long situation, it's going to be so much more difficult. Much more difficult for their offense, of course, than it would be for BYU. For BYU, it's no problem. 18 years for Edwards, 24 years for Paterno. Here's the call. Illegal nation by the offense. The penalty is declined. It'll be third down. You rarely see that call against Penn State. But we noticed it, and you know the two coaches well. They really have an undercurrent of competitiveness between the two. They really have been wanting to play one another for a long time. Yeah, they have, but they handle it in, in a very classy way, I might add. Big play again on third down. The blitz is on. He got away from Robinson, and he found Thomas. Tony Saka with Savvy finds Thomas for a first down at the BYU 19. Josh Arnold, the backup free safety, made the stop. Well, they made the right call at the right time. Here they come, the two linebackers inside. And what a nice job by Sacker scrambling out and then hitting Blair Thomas, who makes a nice run. For the first down, continues to spin and move down the field. They've come up with big plays on third down time after time. Now Thompson bouncing outside again. Down to the 15-yard line. Let's get back to the sidelines and Jerry Punch. 
while junior quarterback Willie Thomas sitting on the bench behind me, actually lying back on the bench. They have bandaged his right knee. He was the gentleman carried off earlier about two drives ago, and they have been evaluating knee. They have to be very careful looking at knee ligaments. They really don't know specifically whether there may be a serious injury or not. They, there's a lot of swelling around the knee. They'll wait possibly early in the week so they can get a chance to look at the knee with possibly a scope, but right now he will not play anymore tonight. Kimmy? Thank you, Jerry. Second and five for the Nittany Lions at the BYU 15. Thompson stopped by Davis. Pick up of about three. Should be third down in short yardage. Nice cut by Thompson and Davis. I wonder how many tackles he's got already. Well, he combined with Rich Kafusi that time. But he's up there. He's made a lot of tackles, but after too many yards have been given up. I'm sure that's what's in his mind right now. Proud papa of a baby girl. One of the few married Cougars on Lavelle Edwards' team. Third and two. Thomas. Davis again with the hit, but not before Blair picks up another first down. Incidentally, they have a, more than a few married Cougars. They got 28 of them and got nine children, as a matter of fact. Well, that is a few by when you think about 90 players. <laughs> hey, now, if you, as a coach, though, I would imagine you didn't have 28 no, at yeah, Georgia. No, not uh, in, in more recent years. Uh, <laughs> many years ago, uh, that probably would have been a, about an average number, about 20, but uh, not today. First and goal from the seventh. Thomas. Oh, Touchdown! to Thomas and he's just trying to find a hole and he does and he gets below those balance on in the end zone and Davis again makes a tackle but too late in the end zone running right behind Freeman the right tackle he found just enough that's all it takes for Blair Thomas bad hold Markowitz boy look at Markowitz he had a chance, didn't he? Bob Davis finally hauled him down. But Joe Markowitz did all he could to give Penn State the opportunity for two. But again, problems on the extra point. They still have the lead, though. We rejoin the game with 10-23 remaining in the fourth quarter, and Penn State still leads BYU 35-26. The Nittany Lions have possession on their own 40, first down and 10, after a Ty Detmer interception. We welcome you back to Jack Murphy Stadium, Penn State, after its second pass interception of the night, perhaps their biggest defensive play of the night, take over. Thomas, Blair Thomas, gets 10 yards when he could have had five. Let's get down to Dr. Jerry Punch. You talk about medical miracles, well, you're watching one tonight in Blair Thomas. Now, two years ago, he tore the anterior cruciate ligament of his right knee. We'll take a look and show you here. It's a small ligament inside the knee. They underwent major reconstruction, actually using part of the tendon here that holds the kneecap in place. That knee, after one year's total rehabilitation, has come back to be what a lot of people believe to be somewhat 75% stronger than it was originally. And I think Blair Thomas has proven that to a lot of folks tonight. Timmy? Thank you, Jerry. And you know, by midseason, he really got back to being the old Blair Thomas. First half of the year, they got all they could out of him, but he wasn't 100%. McDuffie or Daniel? Daniel! Touchdown!
It was indeed a remarkable catch because I believe the ball bounced, bounced off of the head of Crutchfield, the, the cornerback, and then Daniels made it, made the catch after that. Penn State has called a timeout because they could not get enough players onto the field after the celebration, but why not celebrate? That was truly the most amazing offensive play you and I have seen all year, and we've seen a lot of games. Big, big play. Here it is right here. You can see the ball. Crutchfield in good position, but watch the concentration as he goes down, continues to concentrate. <laughs> and what a, what a play. There we go. Crutchfield really makes a nice play. But again, Daniels keeps looking. And then he keeps looking again. And fortunately, the ball came right to him. Here we go again. There's Crutchfield. Hits it, but not enough. Bounces off the head of Daniel. Falls down off his hands and then into his gut. You think of Mark Washington trying to cover Lynn Swan in the Super Bowl in Miami. The pass was from the one. It went to the Dallas 40-yard line, and that led Pittsburgh to victory. Well, the folks from that college town in the state of Pennsylvania can be awfully proud of a catch made at the collegiate level that looks so similar to that one made in that other decade. They're going for two. Incomplete intended for McDuffie. So it's still a 15-point game with 9.28 remaining. And BYU can certainly score more points, but the problem is they haven't stopped Penn State yet. 41 to 26 our score with 9.28 remaining. Hey, here it is uh, one more time. There's some question, and you might can have an argument. Is he in? Does he have possession? But he's in. He's sliding out. Now, only one foot, remember. One yeah. foot in college football. I, I think he was in. It's a catch and a great play. Chip Nail. Believe by Time Warner Cable. Love you, Mom and Dad. Number one, Mom and Dad. Love you. Come to home. Oh, hey, Chip, boy. I'm coming home tomorrow. Tomorrow we're going fishing, right? All right. Love you, Dad. Love you, Mom. Go, you bet. You should go fishing, Dave Daniels. The junior from Sarasota, Florida, with the, the best catch we've seen all year and arguably the best catch in college football in the decade of the 80s. Two plays, 60 yards, 55 off the clock. Remember the interception by Sherrod Range against Detmer. Only two picks all night. Range with both of them. And you knew BYU was deflated at that point because they knew they had to keep scoring because they haven't stopped BYU. That's going to be difficult, but BYU is a team that can do it. Corley. Gary Brown hauls him down at the 31-yard line. I should have said they haven't stopped Penn State. In fact, Penn State in the second half, one field goal, four touchdowns in their five possessions. And the excitement doesn't stop on ESPN tomorrow night. More college football. The Mazda Gator Bowl. Clemson ranked 14th against number 17, West Virginia. Major Harris will be on display, leading Don Nealon's club against Danny Forge Tigers. still with time for Bellini and he's got it at the Penn State 40 yard line again the tremendous poise of Detmer he kept waiting the great patience and there's Joe shaking his head and I don't blame him so it looked like we got the ball game one and here you come back down the field well you know Detmer's not going to stop no oh. Nine minutes plus remaining in San Diego. Quick out pattern. A huge hit by Chismar against Nyberg. Stayed alive, but Brian cleaned his clock at the 23-yard line. Well, he said he's going to give a few tickets, didn't he? Yeah, uh, he took the toll there. <laughs> he can hit. Two plays. Look here. They're down to the 22-yard line. Berg again, same pattern, and Humphreys hits him this time. Nice tackle by Humphreys. Three plays, they're down to the 10.
Well, you said I believe in the first half when it was 13 to 12 that we wouldn't have 45 points. No, you're not going to see 45. <laughs> <laughs> Look Whittingham. Out. Look out. Touchdown, Cougars. They just don't stop, do they? Three plays. Real plays. With a nine-point game, they could go for two here. That's the old trap draw right here. Nice block by Mays, number 72. And Whittingham, a tough little runner, scores. Again, this is their offensive play, their running play. Draw trap, averaging over 10 yards a carry. Chaffetz, who did miss one extra point here in this half, puts this one through, so they elect to take the one, make it an eight-point game, meaning their one score and a two-point conversion away from tying the game. They need to run some clock if they're going to score. There's Joe. He's pacing it right now. Vince, you know there are coaches like Joe Paterno and Lavelle Edwards, but they're, they're few and far between now. You're out of the game as a head coach. Bo Schembechler announcing his retirement. Really, we're looking at two dinosaurs, if you will, in college football. The last of an era of coaches, long-tenured coaches at one institution. And, and you, you really don't think that there are going to be that many young coaches that stay at the same school. Well, there are, I think there are more demands on coaches than ever before. There's more scrutiny, which, which is good, and obviously, but uh, they expect you to win, expect you to fill the stadium, expect you always say the right thing. There's a tremendous man on head football coaches today. McDuffie fumbles, and it's picked up by the linebacker. Bob uh, Damon picks it up. And speaking of BYU comebacks, back in 1980, you remember this? They scored 21 points in the final two and a half minutes. Jim McMahon hit Clay Brown with a 46-yard Hail Mary pass in the final seconds to give the Cougars a 46-45 win over the Mustangs of SMU. In the days of the Pony Express, Craig, James, and Dickerson. Bell Edwards, four and three lifetime in the Holiday Bowl. And that was a memorable one. He may be witnessing yet another tonight. Swing it out to Thompson. Thompson crawling to the 47-yard line. Ooh. Rocky Beagle finally made the stop. Maybe this uh, this particular bowl and this particular site brings out 40s, 40 games. Mm -hmm. Who would think that Penn State would be giving up this many points? And who would think Penn State would be scoring this many points? Thompson cuts through past midfield down to the BYU 48-yard line. And the scoring drive for BYU, four plays, 68 yards. But remember that time of possession passing game? <laughs> well, they can step it into overdrive when they have to. They don't have time for any possession. they got to get back down the field and score in a hurry. And they did it, and they can do it, as we see here. Whittingham with the 10-yard touchdown run. And the only running play that Lavelle Edwards has in his, in, his, uh, in his arsenal. That is the basic one. And they do have a sweep if you come off the corner a little bit. And that's about it. Second and seven. Davis finally gets Thompson behind the line of scrimmage, and Rocky Beagle is right there with him. Well, they're gambling. They've got to gamble. They've got to start bringing people. They've got to find some way to stop it. Both Beagle and Davis came blitzing through. There's Beagle, number 45, and number 36, Davis. In fact, that may be the greatest coaching decision that's left to be made by either Edwards or Paterno with the help of their collective coordinators, Dick Felt on the defensive side for BYU and Jerry Sandusky for Penn State. When to bring the extra linebacker or the strong safety because neither of them are getting the job done with just bringing the three down linemen. Well, that's now Penn State has had two or three critical third and long plays, and they have delivered each time. Let's see if they deliver here. If they don't, it'll be the first punt. Saka. He delivers. 
Bears. First down, Nittany Lions at the 42-yard line of BYU. And the story continues to unfold for those two men. Lavelle Edwards is used to seeing the, the scoreboard light up, but Joe Paterno is having to get it done a different way tonight. He, he hadn't been in these many. They drive you crazy when you get into them if you're not used to it as a matter of norm. That was a nice decision by Saka. I thought he was going to come out and throw the football, and he should have gone for the first down, and that's what he did and made it. Great decision. Thomas weaving his way to the BYU 39-yard line. Craig Patterson, who's played well tonight, made the stop. Craig Patterson has played well. He came in for Bud Orr, who had a disc problem, and the worry, what but the worry was, was it, would he have the stamina? Look at the track meet, will you? The score by quarters. Both teams moved the ball well in the first quarter. They just did not net touchdown points. They got the field goals, and they had some turnovers, but then they started converting on their opportunities with the long drives and big plays. No goose eggs anywhere. Second and six. Up the middle to Thompson, running into a bevy of Cougars, Beagle, Davis, Patterson, all of them in on the pile. It's probably Davis's 25th tackle of the night. Thompson's carries are getting right up there with Blair Thomas. We haven't seen much of Jerak, who's really a blocking back, and or Jerry Collins, who's Andre's brother, who really did help this Penn State team earlier in the year when Blair Thomas wasn't back at 100%. There are workhorses back there tonight. Saka incomplete for Jacob, and I believe Ferguson may have gotten a hand on that one. Well, this is the first time they haven't delivered, and what are we going to see, a punt? If we do, it'll be the first time Doug Helkowski's been called upon in this game. Remember, they were in a punt formation, but the fake punt went for a first down to keep a Penn State drive alive that led to another touchdown. Now, how would you play this if you were BYU? Wouldn't you play what we call safe punt? Yeah, I'd have a spy. Huh? <laughs> a lot of them. I'd rush about two people, and that's what they're doing. High shanked punt. But it does get a Nittany Lion roll inside the 10, out at the 9. Helkowski will not get points for artistic impression, but he does get the job done at, after a 28-yard punt to put the Cougars back inside their 10. Out here. They have a story to tell, and they tell it in song. TV Music for You presents Once Upon a Song. 34 great hits performed by the world's best-loved musical storytellers. Wake up, Maggie, I think I got something to say to you. I learned the truth at 17. You see, I've been through the desert on a horse with no name. It felt good to be out of the rain. Once Upon a Song brings you over two hours of classic story songs by the artists who made them famous. The devil went down to Georgia. He was looking for a soul to steal. He was in a bind because he was way behind and he was willing to make a deal. I heard my mama cry. I heard a pray the night she cried or die. I knew a man Bojangles and he danced for you. Today, Billy Joe McAllister jumped off the Tallahatchie Bridge. And the cats in the cradle and the shoes. Once Upon a Song on two cassettes or two CDs. This offer is not available in stores, so call now. Call toll free to order Once Upon a Song. Two cassettes, $21.99, two CDs, $26.99, plus shipping. Have your credit card ready and call now. It is a picturesque evening, though, in San Diego's Jack Murphy Stadium. The fans, as always, staying to the end because it always comes down to the last play of the last drive in this bowl game. Detmer to Boyce. He's wide open. How 
to the 45-yard line. Tyson Thomas chased him down a 36-yard strike. Short of last year's blowout and the Barry Sanders exhibition, every game in the Holiday Bowl of the decade of the 80s has been like this. Unbelievable. There he goes. Detmer out to Boyce. First down. At the 43-yard line of Penn State, another first down. Here he comes on the corner and throwing again. This guy's sensational. And Boyce making another catch. Did you see Roger French? <laughs> the offensive coordinator. Keep going. Keep going. Down the sideline. Uh, Other coaches are even getting involved. Getting a workout along the sidelines watching their collective offenses. Somebody move there. We got a flag. Look at this guy. Finally, Berger hauls him down along with Tony Matisic. Todd Berger, 67, Matisic, 59. And you're right, Vince, we had a marker down. Gianetti may be guilty here. Number 85, offsides. The defensive end for Penn State. Coming up next, Sports Center with Tom Meese and Chris Berman, two of the stalwarts. They've been with us. All 10 years of our existence on ESPN in this anniversary year. And they'll have all the news of this day in sports. And this one will be right up there in the uh, headlines. No doubt. This is a great one. And it's, it's far from over. On first and five, Detmer knocked away. By Gibbons, Reginald Gibbons. Got that big paw out in front of the tight end, Chris Smith, number 94 of BYU. Gibbons, just a freshman, does a tremendous job of coming right around. You've got to have that kind of play in order to stop. Ball thrown to Chris Smith, the tight end, but Gibbons, who's probably about a 4 5 40 and can run, and just a freshman made an excellent play. 4 43 and counting. An eight-point game, a touchdown and a two-point conversion is what BYU must have. He dumps it to the secondary receiver, Boyce, inside Penn State's 30 at the 28-yard line. Boy, Paterno must be losing some of those dark black locks over there. He hasn't seen this kind of offense all season long against his Lions. Now, again, it's... Uh... Detmer just finds the one that's open, and you'll see Boyce just sitting down and going ahead out of bounds for the first down. From the 27, first and 10. Smith. First down at the 10. Same pattern that Gibbons broke up a moment ago. A little deep. Chris Smith does not miss on his opportunities. He's like having an extra wide receiver. All five receivers out. they spread the field. Now he's looking, and he's just going to make the point wherever he's open. And Smith, the tight end, was open. A pitch to Corley behind Whittingham, and he's trapped. Gibbons forced him inside and made the tackle. There's that 4-4-5-40 speed from the freshman that is so impressive and one of the reasons he's in the starting lineup for Joe Paterno. And at the nine-yard line, Ty Detmer's in just the spot you'd want him to be. Uh, they're going to have to throw now. No more running here. Looking for his 35th completion of the night. And this drive started at its own 10. Gets away from pressure. Voice is open. And he takes again the secondary receiver and a marker down. Bellini has it at the 7, but there may have been a late hit. Gianetti, 85, was in there. And we may have had a hold. He was being held, perhaps, by Neil Ford. We'll have to wait and see. But G Gianetti was the problem for Detmer, no doubt about it.
Wendell Shelton has been quiet of late. But we're about to hear from him again. Oh, offense. Repeat. Second down. Mike Kine, perhaps the guilty party, the junior. Let's see if we can hear us. Kine right there. On Giannetti. Giannetti, number 85. Either he probably held him. That's where the flag was thrown, and Gianetti was forcing Detmer. And now the ball's back at the 19. Detmer Look at swings him. it out to Bellini. And Bellini is hauled down at the 17-yard line. Todd Berger can't believe it. He's beside himself. He had Detmer trapped. He and Andre Collins, but finally Detmer got rid of it. There comes Berger, and he, there's Bellini out, and I don't know what's happened back there, except you know Detmer is scrambling around. Nice tackle here. Finally get him down. Now ah, he scrambles around. It's really amazing. Andre Collins made the stop. Detmer knocked oh, away the marker down. Brown, Gary Brown is guilty. Pass intended for Smith, the tight end again. No doubt about that call. Gary Brown, number 27, on Smith, the tight end. He Smith bounces off of him, and he crawls over the top of his shoulder. Watch Smith bounce off, bounce off of Brown, knocks him off, which is okay here. I don't know. I think there was contact prior to that. Now, that may not have been it, but the contact made earlier that you feel Smith initiated. Oh, Smith initiated that. That wasn't part of it. The officials felt the other way. The ball was in the air. Detmer in the air. Gibbons. Incomplete. Reginald Gibbons had a chance to pick it off. D'Onofrio, by the way, is in the game. Number 38, the linebacker, the leading sacker on this Penn State team. He's been bothered with a hamstring pull, and they just couldn't, didn't feel with the type of drops that a linebacker has to make against Detmer that he could be that effective. Well, early on in the ball game, but here, with, when it's down to the last play or two, I know he wanted to go in badly, and now they've given him a chance, and he may aggravate that pull. Second and three from the three. Touchdown, Nyberg! of a celebration though from BYU they quickly call the timeout and they're discussing the two point conversion to tie this game 234 remaining Roger French will talk to Ty Detmer about the biggest play of the game coming up Today at IBM.com, we're talking about the NetVista A20. It's a fully loaded, expandable, genuine IBM business computer. Leon, what is with the outfit? You want to see something really cool? Watch these phones. Folks, call the number on your screen now, and the A20 can be yours for not $12.99, not $9.99, but for the everyone has to be sold low price of just $7.99. Watch this phone. This bad daddy comes with an Intel Pentium 3 processor, 1 gigahertz, 64 megs of RAM, 20 gig hard drive, and preloaded top business software, all for just $7.99. Three, two, one. Bingo. IBM if you call now, you not only get the A20 with the Intel Pentium 3 processor for $7.99, but you can get double the memory free. You might uh, want to pick that up. IBM.com. All right, now we are smoking. Call now. Operators are standing by, and these things are going fast. You might want to go to the website. Can I make the numbers flash on screen now? No. 20th anniversary, 7 Eastern, Tuesday, August 28th, only on ESPN Classic. This is what Detmer does so well. 
coming back on this touchdown play. Watch him looking off to the left. Now he goes to the second receiver right here, Nyberg, and he lines it in for the touchdown. And that's what he does so well, go to the second receiver. How quickly does the celebration stop? Very quickly as they line up for the two-point conversion. And, and they got to go here because by the chart, and I'm talking about a chart that we used when I was coaching, if you're behind by two, you go for two. No question about it. Roger French and Lavelle Edwards talk with Detmer. Now the execution becomes the critical factor. Intercepted by Collins. Andre Collins. This could go. This is the new college rule. Oh, we've seen it all at the SeaWorld Holiday Bowl. could have done that. Here's Dittmer, and right in front comes Collins, breaks in front of the tight end Smith, and watch him run. There's some great plays down the field. Dittmer makes a lot, but there's an opportunity right here. But he's got such tremendous speed. Franson just makes an excellent effort, but a great block by Humphreys, number six, that makes the difference. There it is again. Nice break on the ball by Collins, and he's got that splendid speed. Takes off for the sidelines, and I believe this is the first one that I've seen like this. That is, returning <laughs> a two-point for two points. And why not in this game, right, Why Coach? not? <laughs> 43 to 39 the score. By the way, Andre Collins, he's made his name by rejecting teams, making certain that they don't get the field goal, blocking those tries. Here, he rejects a team on a two-point try and gets his own deuce. <laughs> oh, we've seen it all, but there's still a lot of time on that clock. Now, BYU kicks off. Timeouts obviously become a factor. Two remaining for the Cougars. They, of course, used one of them to design the two-point conversion that, uh, unfortunately for Cougar fans, went the other way, went to Penn State. And you see Blair Thomas is awaiting the kickoff from Earl Kaufman. But they can stop the clock a couple of times, and any time he might get is something that would concern Joe Paterno on the other sidelines. And believe me, that man... At 60 plus years, it's getting even older <laughs> as we approach the new year after this game. Well, they are shifting to the onside. Right down, looks Jaffetz. It appears that it did go the 10 yards, and Penn State's on top of it. Well, that just shows you that Lavelle Edwards knows that the only way in his mind he could get the football back again would be if, and only if, they could recover an onside kick. His defense has not stopped Penn State all night. No, I don't. Uh, they had to go for it. You're exactly right. It was a nice uh, play by the Penn State defender, whoever he may be. And I'm or a ton behind. of them down there. Ball at the 46-yard line, and Penn State holds on. Blair Thomas stopped after only a two-yard gain. Craig Patterson again with a shoestring tackle. And we have 2.29 remaining. Cougars' heads are down, but they're not out. Penn State by four. You're looking at the interior of our new Fuji blimp that you're looking at, the newest and most technically advanced blimps in the sky. The Fuji blimp can comfortably hold 12 passengers plus 
that flight through. And a great job by John and Mary. And the beautiful shots that we've seen all evening long, like that one, have been a very special part of the SeaWorld Holiday Bowl. On second and eight, to McGundy, a reverse. And Davis has it. Big Bob was not fooled. Interesting call by Paterno. Well, he would like to take that one back. Mm -hmm. With the, you talk about the second and eight with a team that's been moving from tackle to tackle at six, seven yards at least with Blair Thomas, and they come back with that. Lose yardage, the clock stops, 2.20 remaining as BYU has utilized its final timeout. That only helps the Cougars if they get the ball back with the field position. You see, they, they have absorbed all their timeouts. The Cougars can't stop it again. But, but they got a chance to get the football back. They will get it back. The equipment that the Navy has is state-of-the-art. A lot of the equipment that I work with is leading technology. I spent most of my Navy career working in satellite communications. I actually went through 15 months of school. I've been through very extensive training in mathematics, physics, chemistry. They train you to be the best, and they expect you to be the best. It probably would have cost me around $25,000 for the total amount of training I went to. My parents were very excited that the Navy was going to pay for four years of college. College professors would come aboard to teach us while on the way. I am uh, two courses away from my criminal justice degree. What you've seen is just part of the story. Call this number now for your free 12-minute video and see how the Navy can jumpstart your life. Check out the jobs, training, and money for college that are waiting for you. My Navy experience allowed me to step right into a respectable and fun job. Navy, accelerate your life. 722-2100, call now. Oh, the shark has pretty teeth, dear. And he shows them a pearly white. It's called jazz. And now... All the best jazz is together in one collection. Oh, and tan and young and lovely, the girl from Ipanema goes walking and... Time Life Music presents the classic jazz collection. Count Basie, Billie Holiday, Nat King Cole. Get your kicks on Route 66. Dan Getz, Miles Davis, Ella Fitzgerald. It don't mean a thing if it ain't got Then audition other great jazz albums. Satisfaction guaranteed. Miss the Saturday dance. So call now and get two albums of classic jazz. To order classic jazz, use your credit card to call 1 800 672 6464 or send 1999 for two CDs or two cassettes plus 399 shipping to Classic Jazz, Department 3, Richmond, Virginia 23280 or order online at timelife.com. The Emmy and Peabody Award winning Sports Century The Top 50 and Beyond is right here on ESPN Classic. The awards continue as the critics agree. Sports Century could be the best ongoing sports series on television. You know what made them heroes. You are watching what greatness is all about. We show you what made them human. You cannot be serious! I guess I have a bad temper. You'll see the award-winning Sports Century right here on ESPN Classic. Every weeknight at 8 Eastern and Pacific. You're watching ESPN Classic. They're back in man again, which means they're blitzing, coming after him. Oh, he's going after him. Oh, yeah. Saka's in trouble. And he's down. And they stop the clock. You're right. Out of bounds, and the clock stops. Everything that could go wrong went wrong for Joe Paterno on this series. And his worst nightmare is seeing Ty Detmer on the field with or without timeouts with two minutes left at the SeaWorld Holiday Bowl. We were talking to the offensive coordinator, Roger French. He said, I wouldn't mind being in a situation with a couple of minutes left and we got the football and the game's on the line. 
It's all Lavelle Edwards wanted. Just be in position to win late in the game. Well, they are that right now. Elkowski with a nice boot. Nice hit. Sending Mitchell back to his 10. And he slides down at the 12-yard line. So it will take a Herculean effort. But remember, the last BYU drive began at the 10. And in four plays, they scored a touchdown. Joe Paterno and Lavelle Edwards have waited many years to finally meet. And these two titans uh, in collegiate coaching have had a difficult night, but an entertaining night for all of us that have witnessed. First and ten, BYU. Detmer for Nyberg incomplete. I was trying to count. I'm looking at seven, eight defensive backs in Penn State set. If you count the linebackers that time. Sports Center with Tom Meese and Chris Berman on the way. As soon as this one is concluded, hang in there, guys. It still may take a while. Well, they've got all the defensive backs in. You're exactly right. And only got a couple of down linemen. And they're, they go rush with about three or four at the most. And D'Onofrio will be one of them, number 38. Complete and out of bounds. At the 26-yard line, Brent Nyberg. He has been the favorite target all evening long. He has five catches, and he comes up limping. Well, they're going to have to throw the out routes. They're going to have to get out of bounds. With no timeouts remaining, minute 47. Ty Detmer has set a new Holiday Bowl record, 52 pass attempts. He's in trouble, markers are down, it's incomplete. The markers came in the Penn State perimeter, thrown in the secondary. And it's against Penn State, and Joe's look will tell you that. It was on the tight end, Smith. I think they were holding him. Wendell Shelton will give it to us. Holding. Defense. Automatic first down. All Joe can do now is watch. And Lavelle, much the same. First and 10, BYU at their own 37. 140 remaining. No timeouts left. Bellini stopped at the 39 and pushed back. Andre Collins makes the hit. And remember, it's Collins' two-point conversion off the missed two-point attempt that means Chaffetz cannot be a factor. They need a touchdown. Smith, first down, BYU at the Penn State 46. Gary Brown wrapped him up. They rushed three that time, the time before. They blitzed and rushed six and seven. They gotta keep changing it up. Clock stops as the chains move and it restarts. Out pattern to Boyce. This, this offense does not have to have timeouts with two minutes left. They got, in fact, they may have too much time left at the rate they're going. Minute three. They don't need the timeouts. It moves so fast down the field. Second down and two is what BYU has in front of them. And now the Nittany Lions defense calls a timeout. They'll regroup. It's even more amazing when you consider what BYU has accomplished, Vince, when you think of Paterno's reputation and Jerry Sandusky, his defensive coordinator, his reputation for having the time to prepare a team for a certain style of offense. In 86, 
as they prepared for Miami, there's no question. They were confusing Vinny Testaverde. But they have not been able to confuse BYU even with the weeks to prepare for this game. Well, because of, I think, that quarterback, Dittner, who does not get rattled. He absolutely has tremendous patience. And when they're rushing three or they're rushing six or they're rushing whatever it may be, he makes the adjustment, he makes the read, and he's able to go to the second and sometimes the third. Look at him. Look at those numbers. Look at those stars. Holy smokes. Those aren't asterisks. Those are stars. And he is a star. Not only of the future, but of tonight. Mm -hmm. I've seen a lot of performances, but I've never seen one better. Coming from you, that means a lot. Smith, incomplete, knocked away by Sherrod Range. He has two interceptions tonight. He almost had a third. They saw Smith hits Sherrod Range, who really has had two tonight and a chance for a third. Big one. Now it's third and three. And unlike Penn State, BYU has problems in these situations. No timeouts left, and we're under a minute. 57 seconds left. They got to throw the little short. like Penn State that usually never has this happen to them suddenly comes up and makes it the kind of play you'd never expect Penn State in a, in a situation like this. They've been averaging 19 points a game this year. They got 49 right now. And the defense averaged giving up 12 points to its opposition. Tonight, that man's team has scored 39 could have had more. He certainly needed more. Well, hey, my mom, my Kevin, Ryan, my dad, Kyle Megan, you know I love you. So what up? <laughs> this guy was a leading Russia last year. He was the tailback when Blair Thomas was hurt. Scored the winning touchdown against uh, West Virginia two years ago in <laughs> State College. And Tarassi. Nails it. And the Nittany Lions may finally rest more comfortably in San Diego. 50 to 39 our score. Here we go. There comes Brown. Comes behind him. Then rips it out of him. And takes off running. An old running back. Who got his chance again to run. He sneaked up behind Dittmer which is probably the best way because he can feel everything, but he got behind him, then came back in from the backside, put that big mitt down on him and yanked it out. And who was trying to block him and couldn't? The Outland Trophy winner, Muhammad Elowanibi, and he's in disbelief. And look at, look at the sidelines, right? Look at Joe, yeah. He's happy. You know, this is not a game for a national championship. He's won two. Lavelle Edwards has won one. But he may remember this game as well as he remembered those national championship games because he never had to work harder and win in a way that he dislikes as much as this game tonight. He doesn't like winning games, 
by a score of 50 to 39. I know he loves to win games, <laughs> but not this way. <laughs> you can win them anyway, believe me. <laughs> Doesn't make any difference, but I know what you're talking about. But you're happy to win it. I'm happy for Joe, but I'm also sad for Lavelle because two great coaches, two fine gentlemen in every respect, and I've been in both situations. And I've been in that situation when you lose, and it hurts. And it's going to hurt for a good while. And I've been in the other situation. At the conclusion of this game, our thrifty car rental players of the game will be announced. We'll have them for you. Pretty easy to choose. We'll let you know who they were before it's over. Well, I... Like I said, I didn't think we were going to see uh, this kind of scoring. A little more scoring than I'd anticipated. Corley finally gets on top of it at the 32-yard line, and down he goes. Go gain us, among others, on top of it. Well, why make you wait? Our thrifty car rental player of the game, BYU quarterback Ty Detmer, 40 completions, 56 attempts, 547 yards, two touchdowns, two interceptions. And for Penn State, Blair Thomas, 185 yards on the ground, 35 carries, a couple of receptions for 45 yards, more than 200 all-purpose yards for Blair Thomas, destined to be yet another in a long line of number one draft picks from Penn State. We have an injured Cougar, it appears, at the 32-yard line. Well, there's 39 seconds left, and I don't believe that I'm going to catch a flight back to Atlanta, Georgia, for the Peach Bowl. Yeah, I, I believe we need to send a bulletin to Barbara Dooley, and that is that you may not be there as early as anticipated back in uh, But in I'll Atlanta. be there by game time. Stacy Corley was injured. Here's to be his leg. Don't forget... The Mazda Gator Bowl coming up 8 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow night. Clemson against West Virginia as the whole week concludes. And our college football campaign comes to an end on ESPN this year. And it has been thrilling as always. Bellini underneath out to the 40-yard line. Again, the clock cannot be stopped. And it shows 30 seconds and counting. Andre Collins on the stop. Barbara, by the way, is the acting athletic director in Atlanta. <laughs> well, Coach Dooley's with us. Is, look, still, still completing them as the clock runs down. She'll be reminding you of that when you get back. I just thought I'd say that now. <laughs> I'll be there in time for the game. I won't be there when I'd anticipated being there, and I'm sure there's another flight sometime tonight. Incomplete, intended for Matsuzaki, number 82. Well, Ty Detmer has gone a long way in determining who the front runners for the Heisman Trophy will be as the 1990 season gets underway. And uh, Bill Parcells hasn't gotten as much water oh. as Joe Paterno tonight. Uh, he doesn't mind it. Go ahead. <laughs> well, he's happy. There was a question, would Penn State be back? They're the Lambert Trophy champions. They're headed to the Big Ten in the future. And Joe Paterno still winning games. And that's it. And it ends on the second sack of the game for Penn State. Todd Berger gets it, and that'll do it. Joe Paterno, Penn State Nittany Lions, close out the year 8-3-1 and one with the victory tonight over a BYU team that proudly represented the up-and-coming WAC Conference. Goes right to Ty Dittmer, and that's where he wants to go, and then to LaBelle, and he, he, even though you're happy, you still have that feeling for a friend that uh, you know how he feels, and has great compassion. Two legends in the coaching industry, and it's been my honor to work with yet another legend all year long, Vince Dooley. Our final score, Penn State 50. BYU 39, our thanks to the Fuji Blimp, the Holiday Bowl, and all of the people that were with us. John Reed, the executive director of this fine bowl committee. Dick Howard as well, Debbie Lash. All of them very much a part of the SeaWorld Holiday Bowl. For Dr. Jerry Punch, Vince Dooley, I'm Tim Brando saying so long.